Stomach acid is designed to kill. It's anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 times stronger acid than the acidity in the small intestine in the colon. So it's really the front line of your immune system and any pathogen, bacteria, viruses, other foreign invaders that get in through your mouth, hit the stomach and they get killed. So most oral probiotics are gonna be killed in stomach acid. And in the gut microbiome, the analogy is acidity. The level of acidity is the great regulator of the gut microbiome ecosystem in the intestinal tract. And it turns out that a weekly acidic acid base level, we, we measure acidity on what's called the, the pH scale, with seven is neutral and anything below seven is acidic and above seven is alkaline. And so a healthy gut microbiome has a weekly acidic pH, anywhere from 6.2 to about 6.8. Welcome everybody to the Healthy Habit Podcast, episode number 115, 115, with Mr. Ross Pelton. He hasn't been with us since episode 22, back in, literally actually a year ago to the day, April, mid-April of 2023, so go back and definitely watch that episode if you missed it on Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, the microbiome and metabolites with Ross Pelton, who's the scientific director for Essential Formulas, which specializes in premium probiotic products. Ross is also a clinical nutritionist, health educator, and author of 12 books. In October of 1999, Ross was named one of the top 50 most influential pharmacists in America by American Druggist magazine, magazine for his work in natural medicine. Ross is also the natural pharmacist. His newest book is titled Rapamycin, mTOR, Autophagy and Treating mTOR Syndrome. Ross's personal website, bio, and blog are at www.naturalpharmacist.net. Again, that's Natural Pharmacist. Dot net. Ross, welcome back. How are we doing? Hello, Dr. Dan. It's wonderful to be with you again and uh, just looking forward to our time together. Well, the last episode, in uh, episode 22, we broke down Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. We talked about that multi-year fermentation process, the idea of postbiotic metabolites. That was action-packed episode, very important. We even covered your Ross salad buzz and gave the YouTube link. Remember <laughs> that, Ross? So today... We're going to kind of build off that, you know, and dive even deeper into why oral probiotics don't work, for example. People don't realize we have a microbiome in the mouth, correct? So go ahead. The stage is yours. Uh, you, thanks. Um, so I'm trying to get people to really understand how this whole gastrointestinal tract and the gut microbiome and probiotics really work and get people familiar with the term postbiotic metabolites. Right. And so, yes, we do have an, an oral microbiome. But I'm going to focus more on the, the rest of the gastrointestinal tract. And so I, I wrote a short little article titled The Oral Probiotic Dilemma, right. which is really the scientific explanation why most probiotics aren't very effective. And there's three parts to the oral probiotic dilemma. And the first part is stomach acid. Stomach acid is designed to kill. It's anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 times stronger acid than the acidity in the small intestine in the colon. So it's really the front line of your immune system and any pathogen, bacteria, viruses, other foreign invaders that get in through your mouth, hit the stomach and they get killed. So most oral probiotics are gonna be killed in stomach acid. There are products that are enteric coated probiotics and some spore based probiotics that can survive transit through the stomach. But then the small intestine is the second part of the oral probiotic dilemma. Turns out the small intestine is also a really hostile environment for probiotic bacteria if they make it that far, because we secrete a substantial amount of bile acids and digestive enzymes, pancreatic enzymes into the small intestine. Right. And their job is to digest food and they will digest and destroy the cell membranes of bacteria if they're making it that far. Wow. And then the third part of my oral probiotic dilemma is I think one of the most serious situations going on on planet earth, which is bad diets. It's really, uh, it's killing people. And right. 
So I've, if probiotic bacteria survive transit through the stomach and through the small intestine, when they reach the colon, that's really the site of action. Over 99.9% .9 of the bacteria in your intestinal system reside in the colon. So we really need to understand that that's really the primary site of where probiotic bacteria will function and do their job. And what we're learning about the job of probiotic bacteria is that their job is to break down component, components in your food mm -hmm. and produce secondary compounds that have a wide range of biological activity. And we call these compounds postbiotic metabolites. Metabol so... One thing that is really having a negative impact on the health of many people is the fact that they are not able to effectively produce these postbiotic metabolites because they're not feeding the probiotic bacteria yeah. well. I, I regularly say if you don't feed your probiotic bacteria well, they won't thrive and survive. And most people are starving their probiotic bacteria. So let's explain why this is such a problem. Right. There are two basic food groups for probiotic bacteria. They are dietary fibers and compounds called polyphenols. And for people not familiar with polyphenols, there are over 8,000 of them that have been structurally identified. And generally speaking, they're the compounds that give color to fruits and vegetables. Uh, there are some polyphenols also in spices and herbs and some of the whole grain products, but the primary source of polyphenols are fruits and vegetables. So a comment about these two food groups. First of all, humans do not di contain the, the enzymes that are uh, enable us to digest dietary fibers. So dietary fibers will pass all the way through your digestive system without being metabolized or changed at all. Right. And similarly, many of the polyphenols are huge molecules, monstrously large molecules, and we do not metabolize and absorb many of the polyphenols very effectively. So a lot of them pass through the digestive tract unchanged also. And when these polyphenols and dietary fibers reach the colon, they are the food for your probiotic bacteria. Now, the problem, Dr. Dion, is that I've got multiple studies that document the fact that anywhere from 80 to 95% of American children and adults are not consuming adequate amounts of dietary fibers and polyphenols. Right. Almost nobody's feeding the correct diet that creates an optimally functioning microbiome that can produce these postbiotic metabolites. And and one thing that a lot of people don't understand, it is not just the quantity of these compounds that's missing, it's the diversity. People have anywhere from 800 to 1,000 different species of bacteria right. in the colon, and these are different organisms that require different types of food. So in order to have a healthy gut microbiome, people have to consume a diversity of different types of fruits and vegetables so that they can support the growth of a diverse, diverse range of these bacteria so the bacteria can then produce a diverse range of the health-regulating postbiotic metabolites. So that's the problem. Diet, diet, diet is critically important. And so many people rely on fast foods and processed foods that we are just not creating a healthy gut microbiome. And there are scientific studies associated with virtually every single age-related disease right. associated with dysbiosis and bacterial imbalance in the gut. So it's really the gut that is, I think, at the core of what I call our current epidemic of epidemics. We've got an epidemic of heart disease and cancer and diabetes and dementia and inflammatory bowel diseases and autism and all of these things are reaching epidemic proportions. And I think the major contributor to this is bad diets and resulting in a dysbiosis or a bacterial imbalance. And right. that goes on to create a damage to the intestinal barrier and on it goes. Absolutely. So, and talk about antibiotics for a second as well. You know, that's yeah. one of the leading countries in the planet with antibiotic prescriptions. What effects that going to be having then to complicate the issue? You know, I mean, ev 
a lot, millions upon millions of Americans every year uh, go through rounds of antibiotic courses, plus not getting that fiber you're referring to, plus, you know, how does all that play a role then, directly killing off even the good bacteria? With the, yeah. yeah, it's that's a huge, huge point you just brought up, antibiotic use and overuse is really having a negative negative impact on the gut microbiome. It It's like carpet bombing. You know, it kills all your good plus your bad bacteria. And some of the bacteria that survive are then able to proliferate. And they're generally the bad bacteria because they've wiped out all the competition. And so you have uh, antibiotic resistance becoming a major problem globally. Right. And another big group of drugs that I'd like to mention that are causing problems yeah. in the microbiome are all the antacids and PPIs acid drugs. Um, suppressing acid creates a problem in the gut microbiome. You're changing the, the level of acidity, which enables pathogens to grow. Um, so one of the things I'd like to share with our listeners is that I, I do mm. an analogy between temperature which is a critical regulator of the environment on planet Earth for yeah. plants and animals and humans. And in the gut microbiome, the analogy is acidity. The level of acidity is the great regulator of the gut microbiome ecosystem in the intestinal tract. And it turns out that a weakly acidic acid base level, we, we measure acidity on what's called the, the pH scale with seven is neutral and anything below seven is acidic and above seven is alkaline. And so a healthy gut microbiome has a weakly acidic pH, anywhere from 6.2 to about 6.8. So how do we create and how do we maintain this weakly acidic environment in the gastrointestinal ecosystem that promotes the growth of your good bacteria and suppresses the growth of pathogen well, it turns out a lot of these postbiotic metabolites are weakly acidic compounds. You've got short chain fatty acids with propionic acid and acetic acid and butyric acid. Right. And then there's organic acids and nucleic acids and amino acids and fulvic acids. All of these postbiotic metabolites that are created if a person is consuming a diverse range of plant-based foods, fruits and vegetables, so the bacteria can make these postbiotic metabolites. That's how you regulate the ecosystem in the gastrointestinal tract. So <clears throat> unfortunately, right. most people are not doing that, but we've talked previously uh, on episode 22 about Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Yes, sir. Produced in a multi-year fermentation system that allows the bacteria time to create over 500 of these postbiotic metabolites. So let's so, let's dive right into that then. I want to pick yeah. up Dr. O'Hara's perfect segue then, probiotics, which one of our most popular selling probiotic products here at Healthy Habit for the last 10 years and beyond. What's When you take a capsule of Dr. O'Hara's, what's exactly inside then that's going to be separating it from the pack or making it unique, more yeah, effective? The, the fermentation process that Dr. O'Hara created makes it unique and different than every other probiotic product on the shelves in the stores. There are some probiotic bacteria in the final product and some of the prebiotic foods that are used in the production process, but the vast majority after three years of fermentation is this 500 postbiotic metabolites. So yes, there are some probiotics in there, but that is not the primary function of Dr. Here probiotic. We're not competing with all these other companies that say, mine's got 50 billion, mine's got 100 billion, mine's got 200 billion. People don't realize that a healthy microbiome depends on balance and diversity. And when people take these high dose probiotics with 100, 200 billion bacteria, even if it's a healthy strain of bacteria, you're working against balance and diversity. And in some people, that will cause the immune system to mount an alarm reaction. It's too much. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So I, I try to get people to understand the importance. Of every time they eat, they're hosting a very large party. You're feeding 100 trillion guests, your gut microbiome. And it's important to realize the importance of consuming a little bit of as many different types of fruits and vegetables every day so you get this diversity of fibers and polyphenols to support a healthy gut microbiome. And I'm Circle pulling up back. right here. Sorry for that delay. I'm pulling up right here 
if we can just go check out this real quick doctor if you go to dr ohira probiotics.com you can even get there through essential formulas this is the wrong it's one here i'm sorry about formula. that a little bit more information about these postbiotic metabolites many of them have anti-inflammatory activity and when people have bacterial imbalance and dysbiosis that creates inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract right and so they want anti-inflammatory activity to rebalance things and a lot of these postbiotic metabolites, as I mentioned, are weakly acidic compounds that will adjust the acid-base balance. And many of them are classified as antimicrobial peptides. Right. They are actually natural antibiotics that your probiotic bacteria will make if you're eating a, a diverse plant-based diet. So this is another critical part of your immune system, the anti natural antibiotics that your probiotic bacteria make. Yes. And so there's just a wide range of other types of activities that your postbiotic metabolites will provide. Uh, one of the big uh, benefits is that they are a major source of energy supply for the renewal of the cells that line the gastrointestinal tract. And when people have dysbiosis, their gut lining is inflamed, and you want to replace those inflamed cells with healthy new cells. And the energy for renewing those cells comes from postbiotic metabolites, especially one called butyric acid. And a lot of people don't realize that you make an, an entirely new lining of your gastrointestinal tract about every six to 10 days if you're right. a healthy individual. But it takes these postbiotic metabolites to provide the energy to renew these cells in the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. But when people take Dr. Here's probiotics, they immediately start to get this anti-inflammatory activity and rebalance the acid base level and support the immune system and reestablish gut brain communication wow. and on and on and on. When people take commercial probiotics orally, those bacteria, as I talked about in the oral probiotic dilemma, are not likely to survive transit through the stomach and the small intestine. And even if they arrive in the colon, most people don't consume a diverse range of plant-based foods that enable the bacteria to produce the postbiotic right. metabolite. And consequently, gut problems are rampant and all these other chronic degenerative diseases of aging are linked back to a bad gut. And I pulled up the correct one. This looks, this is the original formula, correct, Russ? That's the original yeah. formula, three years fermentation. And I'll just mention that <clears throat> the fermentation process that Dr. Ahira created right. really mimics the natural fermentation process that goes on in the human colon. Yes. The food takes on average 24 to 72 hours to transit through the colon before it gets eliminated in a bowel movement. So that's the amount of time your bacteria have to create the postbiotic metabolites in your colon. And Dr. Ahira's three-year fermentation system, the bacteria have 26,280 hours to digest the food that they're given and produce the postbiotic metabolites. So that's the the miracle of Dr. Yeah. O'Hara's fermentation process. We call it the Dr. O'Hara's advantage. And what we try to get people to do, Dr. Dion, is purchase a 30 count box of Dr. O'Hara's probiotics and double the dose. Take two capsules twice a day for a week. Yeah. Most people are gonna experience a decrease in fatigue more energy, better gastrointestinal function, better elimination. We've got a human clinical trial with women that had a long history of constipation. In two weeks, taking three capsules a day, they all normalized their elimination and their bowel movement. So it's not just for diarrhea, it's also for constipation. It's Dr. O'Hara's probiotics is an adaptogen. It normalizes oh. bowel function. Wow. Uh, yeah, exactly. So Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, three-year fermentation process, it's actually coming from that team up there in uh, the University of Japan, Okayama U University in Japan, with uh, Dr. O'Hara, PhD, his team of distinguished research scientists, award-winning microbiologist is Dr. O'Hara. And this is a, a real ancient Japanese fermentation process. Is that correct? Natural food fermentation process. Fascinating. Why do they do that? Well, to unlock those postbiotic metabolites, correct? So that it's not just simply a probiotic coming down the hatch that gets destroyed in the in the stomach acid, correct? Back to that initial point you were bringing up. How does this help us make it through that harsh acidic environment? Well, the postbiotic metabolites are 
compounds, but they're not live organisms like the bacteria. So the acid in the stomach and the small intestinal environment don't harm the postbiotic metabolites. Yeah. They successfully get to the colon and immediately start to provide all these benefits of reducing inflammation and killing pathogens and uh, rebalancing the acid-base environment so that your yeah. probiotic bacteria can proliferate and start to, to function for you. You were mentioning all those chronic diseases earlier, Ross, even heart disease, strokes, you know, heart pro high blood pressure, all these, this is the number one killer among Americans is uh, heart problems. So what role exactly then will having these right pro postbiotics getting down to the colon have then in protecting our heart, right? You so obviously by reducing inflammation, but what else maybe you can hit on like TM, TMAO, TMAO and then things of that nature. How is this right. directly helping us? Uh, Cause you could see people that have had heart attacks and strokes in the past, their gut microbiomes looking terrible. Right. So yeah. let's hit on that specifically because we see tons of patients here looking for cholesterol support and high blood pressure support here at the clinic and store. So let's hit on that specific part. Yeah, well, when you have bacterial imbalance, a lot, the, a lot of the bad bacteria also produce postbiotic metabolites, but they're harmful to your body. And some of these, as you mentioned, get absorbed systemically and go to the heart and have a very detrimental effect to cardiac function. Uh, the TMAO that you mentioned is one of the metabolites from a pathogen and uh, elevated levels of pathological bacteria when you have this bacterial imbalance are going to get absorbed into your system and go to the heart and increase cardiovascular risks. Perfect. So like you said, a good starting point would be maybe two capsules a day, someone that's never used this product and that a good, and then you, would you take it morning with food? Would you up your fiber while taking this product? How would we approach that? Good, couple of good points there. First of all, I'm always emphasizing that there's two pieces to the puzzle. Probiotic bacteria are important, but you've got to feed them well. Diet is critically important. And so that's the, the foundation of making this whole system work. And the, the second part of your question, Dr. Hears is in a patented capsule that stays hard in the acidic environment in the stomach, and then it dissolves and releases the contents in the small intestine when the pH uh, becomes more alkaline. So it doesn't have to be refrigerated. You can take it any time of the day, morning, noon, night, full stomach, empty stomach, just take it every day. Because I think being proactive at creating and ma maintaining a healthy gut microbiome is one of the most important things for healthy longevity. And Dr. Hears is absolutely the best product on the planet to do that for you. Folks, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Mr. Ross Pelton. Last couple minutes coming here for episode number 115. That's 115. And uh, remember, folks, Scientific Director for Essential Formulas, company that we've been working with for five plus years, even back when we were doing the radio program here on 1100 KFNX, we've been talking essential formulas. So uh, we're talking all things Dr. O'Hara's difference and the multi-year fermentation process that separates it from all the other probiotic products on the shelf. And what would be a good recap then, Mr. Ross? People are coming in every day looking to support their gut health. What's a good take home? Uh, for example, here on EssentialFormulas.com, there's a nice little summary on how we're helping here to maintain the healthy pH of the intestines. We're helping to enhance absorption of nutrients from food by having a strong gut microbiome, yeah. even overall healthy digestion and the immune system even, and reducing yeah. heart attack risk. So what would you say is a good take home for people and Dr. O'Hara is here today? Well, some of the key benefits from Dr. O'Hara is our <clears throat> decreased fatigue, more energy, and we got multiple trials that are showing this. And um, better elimination is a big thing. Better whole digestive system is going to function better and better elimination. And there's a two-year bone density study where all the men and the women got increases in bone density. So if you have good gut function, you absorb things like calcium and magnesium and B vitamins, which are involved in bone mineral metabolism. So just a multitude of studies that are supporting Dr. Here's probiotics. Um, some of the cell culture studies show that it's effective against a wide range of pathological organisms like E. coli and H. pylori and even against MRSA, the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So um, these um, antimicrobial peptides, which are one class of the postbiotic metabolites, really are suppressing pathogens 
And uh, I wrote a paper that was published back in 2019 titled Postbiotic Metabolites, the New Frontier in Microbiome Science. And that's the first paper that was ever published in the scientific literature with the term postbiotic metabolites in the title. And so I'm kind of a pioneer in trying yeah. to re-educate the world about how the gastrointestinal tract and the gut microbiome really work and the importance of these postbiotic metabolites, which are delivered in Dr. Here's probiotics, over 500 of the postbiotic metabolites that are really probably the fastest and most effective way of instituting positive changes in the digestive tract. Folks, if you haven't already checked out the Townsend letter, you're missing out. It's my favorite go-to for preventative health, anti-aging research and articles that are out here to keep us informed as doctors in this field. A lot of contributions from other naturopaths and, and folks like Ross himself here, scientific director at Essential Formulas, PhD, telling us about postbiotic metabolites. So not many people are discussing this topic, right, Ross? Um, it's a new topic, and I'm trying to get the word out because this is really, as I say, the new frontier in microbiome science. This is yeah. teaching people how the gastrointestinal tract and probiotic bacteria really work, and it's based on diet. You have to have a, a diverse, health-oriented diet to support your gut microbiome so the probiotic bacteria can produce the postbiotic metabolites that are really the key compounds that regulate your health. I'll link this below if that's okay with you, uh, Ross, for Absolutely. people to, under, the, under the video here in the description box. Folks, the human microbiome is now known to be relevant to virtually every branch of science, medicine, and human health, as you can see here in the opening paragraph. And as Ross was saying, this is a new frontier in, in, in microbiome science, which is evolving rapidly. And the purpose of this article here, he goes even, even more into depth on the history of this of the human microbiome and what this idea of postbiotic metabolites is. I highly recommend folks go back and check out episode number 22, the last time we talked to Ross on Dr. O'Heroes and much more. Ross, thank you. We got to get you on again here soon, my friend. I'd love to talk to you thanks, and Dr. build really on this. Pleasure sharing time with you and, and your listeners. And thanks much.